Huh? Well, I just did another spot. No, that's great. Hare Krishna Shalash Prabhu, Danish Shri Mataji. Hare Krishna Prabhu, Hare Krishna Prabhu, Dandavat Prabhu. Dandavat Prabhu, looks like only two of you are <laughs> still into, into this uh, Bhagavad Vichar. Anyway, let's see. Uh, we had a break one week. And uh, we have class now, and then next class also we can have on Wednesday. But after that, I'm traveling. So probably for one month, I won't be able. Hopefully in July, I'll be still in Europe. By that time, I may be able to to resume. But uh, at least three to four weeks in June. Uh, I'm leaving on uh, June 8th. Uh, so till beginning of July, probably I won't be able. But we'll be in touch because um, on the on the group the group. Anyway, let us uh, let us just uh, quickly remind ourselves what we did last class. I thought that I uploaded the the last class, but then I saw that I didn't. Uh, the last class there that I uploaded was eighth of May, and we had also class on the fifteenth of May. So maybe. I'll upload it later. So we started the 
third third uh, chapter, which is, was entitled Hinakashipu's plan to become immortal. And then uh, at the beginning we hear about Hinakashipu's desires, his austerities and the effects of these austerities. So if you remember, he wanted to be unconquerable, free from old age and free from death without any rival. And he performed severe tapasya at Mount Mandara, standing on his toes, keeping his arms upward and looking towards the sky. And uh, what to the effects of his austerities? Fire eman emanated from his head, spread everywhere, heated up all planets, you know, and the uh, and, uh, planet Earth and the Earth trembled. And of course, the devatas, demigods, they were very much disturbed. They went to Lord Brahma, they prayed to him, please stop these disturbances. Uh, and then he they informed him about Hinikashiku's plans to op occupy the post of Lord Brahma himself and to completely reverse the Dharma that is established in the world. That's why they appeal to Lord Brahma, please take suitable action. And of course, Lord Brahma, then he goes down to Hinikashiku and then he sees him all eaten up by ants, but still he sees that he's present living the bones. So uh, he appreciates his determination and he's promising to offer him some bones. And then uh, he sprinkles him with the water for his commandalu and uh, the Kashipu comes back to life in a, in a young body stronger than ever. And we stop at the verse 25. I'll share my screen now. Okay, on Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya. So, 25. Uthaya Pranjali Prava Kshamano Dushavibum Harsha Ashru Kula Kodhido Gira Gadhya Grina. Then getting up from the ground and seeing Lord Rama before him, the head of the deities was overwhelmed by jubilation. With tears in his eyes, his whole body shivering, he began praying in a humble mood, folded hands in a faltering voice to satisfy the Lord Rama. Just imagine you perform at the Pasya. Thousands of years wanted to get a darshan of of, uh, of Lord Brahma, and then eventually he, he appears. So he was very jubilant. Tears in his eyes. So she hinikashi puru bhacha, alpati kala srishtina, yom dhena tamasavartam. Abhinavyana, Abhinavyanag, Jagat Idam, Swaya, Swayan Jyoti, Swarojisha, Akunatri, Vrishta Chedam, Trijat Yaya, Tilumpati, Raja, Sattva, Kumo, Dhamne, Parya Mahate, Namaha. Just let me quickly switch off this spell checking that underlines everything and then have trouble seeing the just to see the uh, this thing is proofing. Uh, I do. Okay. Translation. Let me offer my respectful obeisances unto the Supreme Lord within this universe. At the end of each day of his life, the universe is fully covered with dense darkness by the influence of time. And then again, during the next day, the self-effulgent Lord, who 
for its own effulgence, manifests, maintains, and destroys the entire cosmic manifestation with the material energy which is invested within the three modes of material nature. He, Lord Brahma, is the shelter of those modes of nature, Sattva Guna, Raja Guna, and Tamaguna. Purport, the words Abhid Janhag Jagat Idham refer to he who creates this cosmic manifestation. The original creator is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, Jarma Dhyasya Yataha. Lord Brahma is the secondary creator. The Lord Brahma is empowered by Lord Krishna as the engineer to create the phenomenal world. He becomes a supremely powerful feature within this universe. The total material energy is created by Krishna and later taking advantage of all that is necessarily being created. Lord Brahma engineers the entire phenomenal universe. Just this morning I was uh, reading, I was giving Bada class and then in the, in the shlokas it was described that uh, Virat Rupa, when Virat Rupa was created uh, in, the, in the third canto, it was described thousand celestial years, this Virat Rupa rested on the water before the Lord entered into it with his uh, Shakti empowered. And only after that, Lord Brahma was born and only after that he started to create. But before that, you know, the all the ingredients were created by the Lord. Uh, so Lord Brahma cannot do anything without <clears throat> empowerment of the Lord, without the Lord's entering <clears throat> into the material elements with his Shakti of creation, creative Shakti. <clears throat> At the end of Lord Brahma's day, everything up to Svarga Loka <clears throat> is in inundated with water. In the next morning, when there is a darkness in the universe, Brahma again brings a phenomenal manifestation into existence. Therefore, he is described here as he who manifests this universe. Trin Gunan Brinoti, Lord Brahma takes advantage of the three modes of material nature property. Material nature is described here as three Vrita source of the three material modes. So Madhvacharya comments in this connection the three Vritta means Prakritya. This Lord Krishna is the original creator and Lord Brahma is the original engineer. So creator, he engages the engineer. <laughs> You're like a project uh, owner and then you engage a consultant company that comes to build but you are you're the customer you are the one who orders uh, the building the construction so vishnu charitra says abhidhyanak means he manifested he creates and destroys by himself by accepting the three units Nama Adhyaya Vijaya Jnana Vijnana Murtaya Pranindriya Mano Bhudi Vikharair Vyakti Vishya I offer my obeisances to the original personality within this universe, Lord Brahma, who is cognizant and who can apply his mind and realize intelligence in creating this cosmic manifestation. It is because of his activities that everything within the universe is visible. He is therefore the cause of all manifestations. Hmm. Although the Lord Brahma is uh, only the secondary creator, still, it's incredibly difficult, you know, to engineer the universe. We cannot, cannot even imagine, in fact, how, how difficult. It is, you know. Uh, 
we as humans sometimes we are proud we make you know airplane or a rocket or something but what is that comparing to the universe with all the locusts with all the planets with the mountains seas uh, stars well it, it's incredible what Lord Brahma is doing and still for the supreme lord it's not a big deal but for us it's, it's a big deal Airport. <clears throat> the Vedanta Sutra begins by declaring that the absolute person is the original source of all creation. General Yasayata. One may ask whether Lord Brahma is a supreme absolute person. No. The supreme absolute person is Krishna. Brahma is, receives his mind, intelligence, materials, and everything else from Krishna. And then he becomes the secondary creator, the engineer of this universe. In this regard, we may note that the creation does not take place accidentally because of the explosion of a chunk. Such nonsensical theories are not accepted by Vedic students. The first created living being is Brahma, who is endowed with perfect knowledge and intelligence by the Lord. The state in Srimad Bhagavatam, Tini Brahma, Hridaya, Adi, Kavaye. Although Brahma is the first created being, he is not independent, for he receives help from the Supreme Personality of Godhead through his heart. This is no one but Brahma at the time of creation, and therefore he receives his intelligence directly from the Lord to the heart. This has been discussed in the beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam. So Prabhupada here mentions nonsensical theories referring to, I guess, Darwin's theory of evolution, which is, I, I'm not sure whether it's really debunked in the mainstream science circles, but it's definitely that it's not uh, seen as something uh, as established uh, as it used to be maybe 50 years ago, because there are some currents in, in the science world that uh, that are promoting intelligent design, that uh, all this universe is created by some intelligent force, not just the result of accident or Big Bang or whatever it is. Hmm. Um, the other thing, yeah, at the beginning of creation of Brahma, he was alone. Nobody was there to help him. Nobody was there to teach him except the Lord and the Lord was in the heart. So, but to, to hear that voice, to hear Paramatma in his heart, he had to do tapasya. It, it's not that uh, immediately he heard instructions, do this, do that, do No, no, he had to meditate. He needed to establish connection with the Lord in the heart. So similarly, we also, if we want to follow Chaitya Guru, who is in our heart, uh, we need to do Santa Pasya. We need to purify the mind in order to be able to hear the Lord. Otherwise, he is ready to guide us. Uh, meanwhile, until we are uh, pure enough to get that guidance from within, we are requested to approach uh, guru from outside will guide us, Shiksha Guru, primarily, who can help us. Hmm. Lord Brahma is described in this verse as the original cause of the cosmic manifestation, and this applies to his position in the material world. There are many, many such controllers, all of whom are created by the Supreme Lord Vishnu. This is illustrated by an incident described in Chaitanya Charitamrita when the Brahma of this particular universe was invited by Krishna to Dvaraka. He thought that he was the only Brahma. Therefore, when Krishna inquired from his servants which Brahma was at the door to visit, Lord Brahma was surprised. He replied that, of course, Lord Brahma, the father of the four Kumaras, was waiting at the door. Later, Lord Brahma asked Krishna why he had inquired which Brahma had come. He was 
then informed there are millions of other Brahmans because there are millions of universes. Krishna then called all the Brahmans who immediately came to visit him. The Chatur Mukha Brahma, the four-headed Brahma of this universe, thought himself a very insignificant creature in this, in the presence of so many Brahmas with so many heads. Just although there is a Brahma who is the engineer of each universe, Krishna is the original source of all of them. So it's described that our universe is the smallest of all the universes, and there are millions of of Brahmandas of, of universes uh, that are created by, by the Lord. So our universe is the smallest and our Lord Brahma is the smallest. He has only four heads. And then there are other Brahmas from much larger universes who have thousands, and hundreds and thousands and millions of heads. I don't really know how that looks like. It's even difficult, you know, to imagine somebody having four heads. And then when he tries to offer obeisances, Dandavat, you know, some heads are facing upward and some heads are facing downward. How it looks with the with the thousands and millions of heads, I have no idea. So Vishnu Nitaku, he says he has taken a form by transformation of light, airs, mind, senses, and intelligence. So prana, manas, senses, and intelligence, when they transform in certain ways, the form, external form is created. Pam isushe jagatas tastushascha pranena mukena pati prajanam chitasya chitta irmana indriyanam patir mahan dhuta unasha yesha. Your Lordship, being the origin of the life of this material world, is the master and the controller of the living entities, both moving and stationary, and you inspire their consciousness. You maintain the mind and acting and knowledge acquiring senses, and therefore you are the great controller of all the material elements and their qualities, and you are the controller of all desires. Purport. In this verse, it is clearly indicated that the original source of everything is life. Brahma was instructed by the supreme, supreme life, Krishna. There was a, one book called Life Comes from Life. I guess it's still available, but uh, I remember in early days, he used to distribute these books on a street. Life Comes from Life. Uh, and uh, on the cover was, uh, you know, the the Vishnu, the Vishnu form of the Lord as, as Paramatma in the heart. And consists of some conversation of Prabhupada and he's, he's making a point that uh, life has to come from life. It cannot come from that matter. Krishna is the supreme living entity, Nitya Nityanam Chaitanya Chaitananam Tato Upanishad. And Brahma is also a living entity, but the original source of Brahma is Krishna. Therefore, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Mata Parataram Nanyat Kinchit Asti Dananjaya. O Arjuna, there is no true superior to me. Krishna is the original source of Brahma, who is the original source of this universe. Brahma is a representative of Krishna. Therefore, all the qualities and activities of Krishna are also present in Lord Brahma. Well, you can say 50 out of 64 qualities uh, of Krishna are present in Lord Brahma. What was the percentage? What is some percentage that is of Krishna's quality that is in minute, in minute uh, 
quantity present in uh, in all the jivas, including Lord Brahma, who is a jiva tattva. And then Lord Shiva has some extra qualities, and then Lord Narayan has some extra qualities, and uh, Krishna has all qualities, 64 qualities. Narayan has only 60 qualities, so Krishna has four extra qualities. Jivas here 50, and I think Lord Shiva has 55. Vinod Chakritakur, you are the controller to the chief prana, Sutratma. You are the master of the progeny and the master of the chitta by being their consciousness, which arises from transformations of chitta. You are the master of the minds and the senses controlled by the mind. You are the master of the great elements and their sense objects and their impressions. Seven three thirty. Vam saptat tan tan tun itanoshi tanva tayad chitur hotraka vidhyaya cha tam eka atma atma vatam anadir ananta parakavir antaratma. My dear Lord, by your form is the Vedas personified and the knowledge related to the activities of all the yagnik brahmanas to spread the Vedic ritualistic ceremonies of the seven kinds of sacrifice headed by Agni Shtoma. Indeed, you inspire the yagnik brahmanas to perform the rituals mentioned in the three Vedas. Being the supreme soul, the super soul of all living entities, you are beginless, <coughs> endless, and omniscient, beyond the limits of time and space. Purport. The Vedic choice ceremonies, the knowledge thereof, and the person who agrees to perform them are inspired by the Supreme Soul. As confirmed in Bhagavad Gita, Madha Smriti Dhyana Pohanamcha, from the Lord come remembrance, knowledge, and forgetfulness. The Supreme the super soul is situated in everyone's heart. Sarvasi Chaham Hridi Sani Vishtaha. Ishvara Sarva Bhutanam Hridi Sharjana Tishtati. And when one is advanced in Vedic knowledge, the super soul gives him directions. Acting as super soul, the Lord gives inspiration to a suitable person to perform the Vedic ritualistic ceremonies. In this connection, four classes of praise known as Ritvik are required. They are mentioned as Hota, Advaryu, Brahma, and Udgata. And this one, at you alone propagate the same parts of sacrifice such as Agnistoma by the Vedas and by knowledge of the activities understood by the four priests Hota, Udgata, Advaryu, and Brahma. You are the Jeeva of all beings, you are the Antaryami of all beings, Antaratma. See, the four priests are actually needed for proper, proper Vedic sacrifice. And each of them have a function. One is reciting the mantra, the, one, the other one is, uh, you know, checking the pronunciation and immediately corrects. If the if the one who is pronouncing, if he mispronounces, the other one is dealing with the fire and things like that. But it, it's it's a very you know complicated science of this yagas. And uh, I think a couple of classes ago we kind of noticed that it's becoming a fashion or trend in Iskon with these yagas. But how properly we perform them. Uh, that, that's very, very questionable. But uh, because, you know, people like it, some people are just attracted to it. Maybe they're coming from the previous yugas and they were so accustomed to these sacrifices. So they're, they're born now in Kali Yuga and they cannot live without it. But in terms of its effectiveness, uh, 
this sacrifice is a hardly, you know, hardly active, hardly give much. So that's why we should not waste too much time, energy, and money for the sacrifices by by but concentrate on Shaunam Kirtanam as the prescribed method for for this age of Kali. It's just not possible in any other means to meet it this in, in in this Kali Yoga, in this short, short lifespan in which we have traveled with so many travels. <laughs> and then if even if if you you know invest all your hopes and efforts in 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 the yagyas, at the end you'll be you'll be disappointed. You'll be disappointed. You will not make it to the sacrifices. But yeah, it depends what people want. People maybe just they want some you know material benefits uh, to yagya for this planet or that planet to. Re remedy certain, you know, karmic influences. They, they may get that. But even for that, chanting of holy names of the Lord is, is more powerful and more effective. If one sincerely takes shelter of the holy names, I think they can do much more than just doing some patchwork with some yagya to pacify a certain planet and then it works for a few months or a year. And then something else pops out, and then you have to do another yagya for another planet. And in this way, it, it just never ends. So it's, it's not even practical. Tam eva khalo nimisho jananam. Ayur lavad yava yava yavai chinoshi. Putasta atma paramesh yajo mahams from jiva lokasya to jiva atma. Oh my lord, your lordship is eternally awake, seeing everything that happens. As eternal time, you reduce the duration of life for all living entities to your different parts, such as moments, seconds, minutes, and hours. Nonetheless, you are unchanged, resting in one place as a super soul, witness to the sup and the supreme Lord, the birthless, all pervading controller, who is the cause of life for all living entities. So, can I catch up his mistake in Lord Brahma, where he is supreme Lord Vishnu? That's why he's offering these sort of prayers. Purport. In this verse, the word kuttasta is very important. Although the Supreme Presidente of Godhead is situated everywhere, he is a central and unchanging point. Ishvara Sava Bhutanam Hridesh Arjuna Tushpati. The Lord is situated in full in the core of everyone's heart. As indicated in the Upanishads by the word Although there are millions and millions of living entities, the Lord is situated as a super soul in every one of them. Nonetheless, He is one in many. As stated in the Brahma Samhita, Advaita Machyutta Manadi Manantarupam, He has many forms, yet they are Advaita, one and unchanging. Since the Lord is all pervading, He is also situated in eternal time. The living entities are described as parts and parts of the Lord because He is the life and soul of all living entities. Being situated within their hearts as the Antaryami, as enunciated by the philosophy of inconceivable oneness and difference. Achinta Beda Abeda. Since the living entity is a part of God, they are one in quality with the Lord, yet they are different from Him. The super soul who inspires all living entities to act is one and changeless. There are varieties of subjects, objects, and activities, yet the Lord is one. So the Lord is one. We are 
not polytheistic religion, although the Lord has so many forms, but he is still one supreme person. So we are monotheistic religion, but there is actually a technical term uh, for, uh, for our beliefs, something like polymorphic monotheism, something like that, uh, the monotheism with one God in many forms, polymorphic. You are unchanging Kutasta since you do not undergo transformations. You are the Antaryami. You are the Atma of all the bodies, of the Jivas. The previous verse mentioned Atma Atmavatam, which has the same meaning. However, in the previous verse, it specifically refers to the Lord of the performers of sacrifice. As the instigator of actions of sacrifice and performer, of the actions. This word refers to the Lord in all other persons. The Lord is also instigator of actions of sacrifice. He's the one who is inspiring those who want to do sacrifices to do them and he enables them to do it. Tata param na param apyan apyana jit e jit cha in chit yeti kir tam asti vidya kala ste tanavash chasarva piranya garbo si brihat pri prishta. Is it nothing separate from you? Whether it is better or lower, stationary or moving. The knowledge derived from the Vedic literatures, like the Upanishads, and from all the sublimbs of the original Vedic lit knowledge, form your external body, your Hiranya Garbha, the reservoir of the universe, but nonetheless being situated as a supreme controller, you are transcendental to the material world, which consists of the three modes of material nature. The word param means the supreme cause and apara means the effect. The supreme cause is the supreme personality of Godhead and the effect is material nature. The living entities, both moving and non moving, are controlled by the Vedic instructions in art and science, and therefore they are all expansions of the external energy of the supreme personality of Godhead, who is the center as a super soul. The Brahmandas, the universes, exist during the duration of breath of the Supreme Lord. Esyaika Nishvasita Kalam Atava Lambia Jivanti Loma Vilaja Jagat Andanata. Thus, they are also within the womb of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Mahavishnu. Not in therefore is separate from the Supreme Lord. This is the philosophy of Achintya Bhida Abhida Tattva. I think in Prabhupada, this is within the womb. Uh, it's, uh, it doesn't mean that the Supreme Lord has a, has a womb. <laughs> uh, his body is not material. It means it's, uh, Figuratively within the womb means within within him. Because he is the father and the mother. So he has no material uh, organs of you well, know procreation. Not nothing that he has is his is uh, material, it's, it's a transcell such in an underbody. Krishna Jagdit Thakur is separate from the cause, Param, and effect of Param, and from non moving, anajit, and moving, ajit beings. Vidya means the Vedas, Upaveda, source of knowledge, and Kala refers to Angas of the Vedas. Deyo Bodhis Hiranyagharva means the form with the universe in his belly. 
Brihad refers to Brahman, who is separate from the three Brahmas. Dunya Kashyap is offering quite philosophical prayers. So you can imagine that he's very learned. Vyaktam vibos tulam idam shariram. Yenen griya prana mano gunam spam. Mushtes tipto damani parameshke abyakta atma purusha purana. Vyakta stulam. Stula is easy. The cosmic manifestation. Eden Sharir and this body. Oh my Lord, being changelessly situated in your own abode, you expand your universal form within the, this cosmic manifestation, thus appearing to taste the material world. You have Brahman, the super soul. The oldest, the personality of Godhead. Purport. He said that the absolute truth appears in three features, namely impersonal, Brahman, localized super soul, and ultimately the supreme personality of Godhead, Krishna. Cosmic manifestation is the gross material body of the supreme personality of Godhead, who enjoys the taste of the material mellows by expanding. His parts and parcels, the living entities who are qualitatively one with him. The Supreme Presidency of Godhead, however, is situated in the Vaikuntha planets where he enjoys the spiritual mellows. Therefore, the one absolute true Bhagavan pervades all by his material cosmic manifestation, the spiritual Brahman effulgence, and his personal existence. As the Supreme Lord. This universe, as the universal form, is your gross body by which you enjoy the senses, life, airs, and mind, and sense objects. But situated in your Swarupa of great power, Paramashte, you enjoy without a disappearance of your Swarupa. Therefore, you are Brahman, Avyakta, Paramatmatma. And Bhagavan Purusha Purana. Yeah, the oldest personality, Purusha Purana, is Bhagavan, and this is the highest limit of uh, God realization. I think in some religions, you know, they they, they don't have clear they don't have clear concept of personal form of the Lord. Uh, so their conception is uh, more or less impersonal. I think that's the case in uh, in Islam. Christianity, they also don't know how God looks like. They just imagine that he is an uh, old man with a white beard. Or sometimes they accept Jesus as God, although he's the son of God. So again, there is no clear conception of this Bhagavan feature. So they may be leaning towards the Paramatma and Brahman. Ananta Vyakta Rupena Yenidam Akilam Tatham Chida Achid Chakti Yuktaya Tasmi Bhagavate Namaha. Let me offer my respectful basis to the Supreme, who, is, who in his unlimited, unmanifested form has expanded the cosmic manifestation, the form of the totality of the universe. He possesses external and internal energies and mixed energy called the marginal energy, the marginal potency which consists of all the living entities. Purport. The Lord is endowed with unlimited potencies, Parasya Shakti Vividhaiva Shurate, which is summarized as three, namely external, internal, and marginal. The external potency manifests this material world 
the internal potency manifests the spiritual world, and the marginal potency manifests the living entities for mixtures of internal and external. The living entity being part and parcel of Parabrahman is actually internal potency, but because of being in contact with the material energy, is an, is an emanation of material and spiritual energies. The Supreme Personality of God is above the material energy and is engaged in spiritual pastimes. The material energy is only an external manifestation of his pastimes. Okay, so this is quite philosophical. If you have any comment or question, please, please speak. So three types of energy. Bahiranga Shakti, Antaranga Shakti, and Tatashti Shakti, marginal potency. So we belong to that marginal potency. It doesn't mean that there is, you know, place in the universe or in the world uh, where this marginal potency of jivas are located and where they come from. It's 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 a it's a disposition of uh, being marginal energy. It means we are not completely, you know turn towards the spiritual side, towards the Lord, and uh, we also not completely on the other side of uh, external energy. So we are in between and uh, we have opportunity to either go there or here. So it's our marginal disposition due to being very minute part and parcel that we can uh, either lean towards one side or another side. Well, can I just ask a question? Yes, please. Yes, please. So, so we uh, read here, I mean, clearly, Hiranakashipu's prayers to Lord Brahma are misplaced in that he is placing Lord Brahma as the Supreme Being, uh, and Prabhupada is transferring those qualities onto the Supreme Personality of God, Krishna, as being the owner of those properties. So, presumably, his prayers are misplaced and misdirected. Is that is that kind of the understanding we should have here? Well, yeah, you can you can say like that. Uh, is just you know <laughs> uh, replacing uh, the Supreme Lord uh, with Lord Brahma, but. Otherwise, uh, it's all correct. Uh, yeah, philosophically, it's correct. Philosophically, it's, it's all correct. To the wrong, wrong person, yes? Yeah? So. Just, just to the wrong person. But you can also say, Lord Brahma is representing the Supreme Lord, so he might be authorized to accept these prayers on behalf of Supreme Lord or something like that. But definitely, Lord Brahma, he's, he's a marginal potency. He's, uh, he's not the Supreme but Hinakashipu doesn't know that, so that's why, you know, he has a conception that he is a supreme. And although <clears throat> he's praying to him as a supreme, what is his motivation? His motivation is to take over his position, become the supreme. So he wants to become Lord Brahma, actually, to use Lord Brahma to take over his post. So this is the demoniac nature, trying to become God. And in this case, he thinks Lord Brahma is God. But if you remember, who was that? The Jendra, when he was, you know, fighting with the crocodile in the water for thousand celestial years, he didn't know really clearly uh, who was the supreme deity, whether it was Lord Brahma or it was Lord Shiva or Lord Vishnu. But that's why he didn't want to call uh, the Supreme by name because he was not sure who the Supreme was. So that's why he just used you know, the word Supreme and prayed to the one who is Supreme. 
So in this way, he thought uh, the supreme will answer, the supreme will come uh, because I'm praying to him as supreme. Although I don't know who he exactly is, but because my intention is to offer the prayer to supreme, supreme Lord will come. And then it is described that the demigods, all of them were ready there to, to go and help the Jendra and kill the crocodile. They resisted because they saw that he was offering prayers not to them. He was offering prayers to the Supreme Lord, although he didn't know the Supreme Lord's name. So they resisted of helping him and waited for the Supreme Lord to appear. And then Lord, uh, Lord Vishnu appeared because everybody knows, uh, the demigods know that he is Supreme and the Lord knows that he is Supreme. And he knows that the gender prayers were offered uh, to him. But here, you know, Kinikashipu is a demon, he doesn't know. But still he has a quite elaborate knowledge about, you know, <laughs> the, the Lord, although he doesn't know who, who exactly the Lord is. So he's, you know, misplacing uh, him with, the, with Lord Burma. But he knows, you know, how, how, you know, this universe works. And uh, he knows that there is a supreme. I guess he learned it from uh, from Shastra. Somehow he became educated. And uh, Vishnu Charitakur, you endow with the both Chit Shakti, Tumnashvarup, and Achit Shakti of Prakriti for performing spiritual and material pastimes. Chit Shakti is coming from Lord's personal Swarup, personal form, and Achit Shakti. Is a shakti of of uh, Lord's external energy of of prakriti. Yadi das yas ya bi matan varan me vara do tama bhute bi astvad visrishte bio mrityur ma bun mama prabhu. Oh my Lord. For best of the givers of benediction, if you can't grant me the benediction I desire, please let me not meet that from any of the living entities created by you. So he thinks that Lord Brahma is the supreme creator and that he created all living entities and there are no other entities besides the those created by uh, Lord Brahma, which is true in this universe, but, uh, you know, above Lord Brahma, there is a supreme living entity and uh, countless living entities in the spiritual world that are not created by Lord Brahma. Purport. After being created from the navel, Ugarvadakashaya Vishnu, Lord Brahma, the original create, create living being, within the universe created many other different types of living entities to reside in this universe. Therefore, from the beginning of creation, the living entities were born a superior living entity. Ultimately, Krishna is a supreme living being, the father of all others. Aham Bija Pradapitha. He is the seed being father of all living entities. So Krishna, in true sense, he's our, our father, in the real sense, the father of all the jivas. So although it's not one of the five main rasas, you know, some devotees have uh, inclination to relate to Lord uh, as, uh, as, as the father. And I heard of one uh, very advanced uh, devotee in outside of Iskon, but in Gaudiya Mata, who they say he realized his Swarup as as the you know as the grandson of Lord Krishna or something like that. He's aspiring to to be grandson of uh, of Lord or son of Lord Krishna, something like that. He relates to Lord as uh, as as his father. It's some sort of uh, reverse Vatsalya Bhava.
thus far Hinakashipu has adored Lord Brahma as the Supreme Personality of Godhead and has expected to become immortal by the benediction of Lord Brahma. Now, however, having come to understand that the kingdom of Lord Brahma is not immortal because at the end of millennium, Lord Brahma will also die, Hinakashipu is very careful, carefully asking him for benediction that will be almost as good as immortality. His first proposal is that he is not killed by any of the different forms of living entities created by Lord Brahma within this material world. Enough of glorification, please accept the boon. This is what Lord Brahma told him. He didn't deny, see here, Lord Brahma, he didn't deny, oh, don't offer these prayers to me, they're not for me. But he said, okay, enough, enough, ask what you want. So Hinekashipu thought, if I ask to be immortal, it will be impossible to fulfill, since he will say that he also will die at the end of the Mahakalpa. So he knows actually that... Uh, <laughs> Lord Brahma will die at this point. That's how he can think that he is supreme. Thus he will refuse my request. Therefore, by intelligence, I will ask for boon that will result in me being immortal. Let me not die from all beings created by Brahma. Who else is there? So in Kashyabu, he tries to cheat the system, <laughs> you know. Because he cannot directly ask for immortality blessings. He thinks that uh, by asking in this way, that uh, he achieves the same result, becoming immortal. Elixir of immortality. Uh, sometimes we heard, you know, people speaking about this elixir of immortality, but in reality, such thing uh, does not exist in this world. Nantar bahir divan naktam anya smad api chayudha na bhumau nambare mrityur na narair na marigair api Grant me that I do not die within any residence or outside of any residence during the daytime or at night, nor on the ground or in the sky. Grant me that my death not be brought by any being other than those created by you, nor by any weapon, nor by any human being or animal. So he's now trying to cover all possible loopholes <laughs> uh, and to, you know, completely ensure that uh, he cannot be killed. Any other being other than those created by you. So he here, just in case that there are some beings not created by Lord Brahma, he wants to cover that also. The purport. Hrikasipu was very much afraid of Vishnu's becoming an animal to kill him because his brother had been killed by Vishnu. When the Lord took the shape of a boar, he was therefore very careful to guard against all kinds of animals. But then without taking shape of an animal, Vishnu could kill him by hurling his Sudarshan chakra, which can go anywhere without the Lord's physical presence. Therefore, Hinekashipu was careful to guard against all kinds of weapons. He guarded against all kinds of time, space, and countries because he was afraid of being killed by someone else in another land. There are many other planets, higher and lower, and therefore he prayed for the benediction of not being killed by any resident of any of these planets. The three original deities, Brahma, Vishnu, and Maheshwara, Hinakashipu knew that Brahma would not kill him, but he also wanted not to be killed by Lord Vishnu or Lord Shiva. 
consequently he prayed for such a benediction. Thus he recursively to thought himself securely protected from any kind of death caused by any living entity within this universe. He also carefully guarded against natural death which might take place within his house or outside of the house. So natural death is also a possibility, uh, but for natural death, you know, at least on this earth, you need to get old. Uh, and then you have some sort of warning, oh, I'm getting old, I'm getting sick. So that means that is approaching. But on the planets of Devatas, on the demigods, high planets, uh, you don't you don't have uh, old age and disease. So that is, uh, you know, very surprising. You're in a full youth, uh, in a very strong body with a strong senses. But when your 100 years expires, you, you're gone. Uh, so there is not much warning there. So we are in that sense a bet in better position because everything reminds us that our time is ticking and it's coming. Also on the Bilba Svarga, the demons who live there, they also don't suffer from you know old age or disease. Uh, but they're all destroyed when uh, Lord Sudarshan Chakra appears there. They meet that also in, in, in a moment. So it's also surprising to them. So they're not preparing for that. And then it is also not preparing for that. Only on this planet Earth, we're lucky enough that we have enough warnings to start preparing timely. <clears throat> that should happen naturally. <clears throat> if all places and times excluded for that, <clears throat> the natural death will also be excluded. <clears throat> the forms of Vishnu, such as Varaha, all created by Brahma, but Vishnu is without form. So, see here, this little reveals his thinking, Tanitashiku's thinking. It thinks that uh, Vishnu and other forms of the Lord are created by Brahma. That he's just one created being, like we are. But then he thinks that actually the Vishnu is is, is formless. It's is like some Brahma Jyoti. And then when he appears, uh, when he manifests, he becomes like Varaha and other incarnations. This is Mikashipu's conception. If he without form throws his chakra, for other weapons, my boom will be useless. This is my worry. Just let me not be destroyed by any weapon or anything else. Though the world inside and outside covers all places, Vishnu could think of some particular loophole related to the meaning of the two words. These particular places must also be excluded. Not on earth refers to all the seven lower planets down to Patala. Not in the sky refers to all upper planets. All these are excluded, <clears throat> fearing other beings like Daksha. He then says that all men should be excluded as well. <clears throat> So yeah, Dakshra is a Prajapati, so he's making sure that none of the Prajapatis will kill him either. <clears throat> okay, continuing. Vyasubir Basuma Debirva Smrasura Maho Ragai Aprati Vandvatham Vidhe Aika patyam chedehinam sarvesham loka palanam mahimanam yatatmana tapu yoga 
प्रभावनम याना अर्षति कांचित <clears throat> grant me that i not need that from any entity living or no living grant me further that i not be killed by any demigod or demon or by any great snake from the lower planets since no one can kill you in the battlefield you have no competitor therefore grant me the benediction that i too may have no rival give me so logic over all the living entities and presiding deities and give me all the glories all the glories obtained by their position furthermore give me all the mystic powers attained by long austerities and the practice of yoga for this cannot be lost at any time report <clears throat> Lord Brahma obtained his supreme position due to long austerities and penances, mystic yoga, meditation, and so on. Nikashibu wanted a similar position. The ordinary powers achieved by mystic yoga, austerities, and other processes are sometimes vanquished, but the powers obtained by the mercy of the Lord are never vanquished. Rikashi would therefore want it a benediction that would never be vanquished. <clears throat> so yeah, if you, you get some CD through through mystic yoga practice, doesn't mean that you have it eternal, doesn't mean that you will have it next life. Because the residents of Sida Loka, for example, they're natural, just being being born. On Siddha Loka, they have all this Anima, Lagima, Mahima, all the yogic cities. They don't need to perform any mystic yoga to attain these cities. But once they die and they are not anymore on the Siddha Loka, they don't have any more these perfections. So they come with a body for them. And some rare people who have human bodies who don't have by default this. Uh, Mystic perfections, they can develop them with a great endeavor. And uh, the seed is also considered an obstacle on the part of transcendentalism because it's just allurement that enables you to control more of this material world and material nature. And just imagine you will have a city to become invisible. What would you do? You could go anywhere and anywhere and uh, steal and take anything nobody would see anything you could enter the other people's houses you could go into the bank and all sorts of things so it's it's not something that is uh favorable for, for spiritual growth and, and progress it's just allurement to for enjoyment of, of, of material world. So this is the end of the third chapter. And we are going to the fourth chapter. I don't know how a little tired because it's it's so so hot here. But not only hot, it's so humid. Uh, although the temperature is only 34-35, it feels like 50, 50 something. Chapter summary. Nikashi put terrorizes the universe. Would anybody be able to read at least this chapter summary? And then I'll, I'll continue with, with the shlokas. If anybody please volunteers to read it, that I get uh, two minutes break. I That's can correct. try. Oh, yeah. No, go ahead, Mataji. Yes, Mataji, please, if you if you can read it. Iranya Kashipu theorizes the universe. This chapter fully describes how Iranya Kashipu obtained power from Lord Brahma 
and misuse it by harassing all the living entities within the universe. By severe hostilities, Hiranakashipu satisfied Lord Brahma and obtained the benedictions he desired. After he received his benedictions, his body, which had been almost entirely consumed, was revived with full beauty and a luster like gold. Nonetheless, he continued to be envious of Lord Vishnu, unable to forget Lord Vishnu's having killed his brother. Hiranyakashipu considered everyone in the, in the ten direct direction and the three worlds and brought all living entities, both demigod and Ashura, Ashuras, under his control. Becoming the master of all places, including the residence of Indra, whom he had driven, driven out, he began enjoying life in great luxury and thus became mad. All the demigods but Lord Brahma, but Lord Vishnu, Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva came under his control and began serving him. But despite all his material power, he was dissatisfied because he was always puffed up, proud of transgressing the Vedic regulations. All the Brahmanas were dissatisfied with him and they cursed him with determination. Eventually, all the living entities within, this universe, within the universe, represented by the demigods and sages, prayed the Supreme Lord for relief from Hiranyakashipu's rule. Lord Vishnu informed the demigods that they and the other living entities would be saved from the fearful conditions created by Hiranyakashipu. Since Hiranyakashipu was the, oppress the oppressor of all the demigods, the followers of the Vedas, the cows, the Brahmanas, and the religious, saintly person, and since he was envious of the Supreme Lord, he would naturally be killed very soon. Hiranyakashipu's last exploit was would to be would be to torment his own son Pralad, who was a Maha Bhagavata and exalted Vaishnav. Then his life was, would end. When the demigods were thus reassured by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, everyone was satisfied, knowing that the miseries inflicted upon them by Hiranyakashipu would come to an end. Finally, Narada Muni describes the characteristics of Palad Maharaj, the son of Hiranyakashipu, and describes how his father envied, envied his own qualified son. He, in this way, the, the chapter ends. Thank you, thank you for reading. Sorry so, for yeah. the mistakes. <laughs> no problem. Okay. So, so Hiranyakashipu, he did you know, many, many bad things, but as Prabhupada says, the last exploit would be torment of his own Samper life. If he somehow skipped that, if he didn't torment Prahlad, you know, the he would not be killed by Mishima there. So it was it was a fatal mistake for him to do that. He had if he had little intelligence, he would be in you know, leave the Pilad alone. But of course it was all predestined and or organized by Lord Salila Shakti. Okay, Shinarada Vacha Evan Vrita Shita Dhitir Tinakashi Poratha Pradat Tat the Pasa Prito Varamstasya Sudurlabam. Naradamuni continued, Lord Brahma was very much satisfied by Hinkashipu's austerities, which were difficult to perform. Therefore, when solicited for benedictions, he did grant them, although they were rarely be achieved. Somehow, you know, the Lord Brahma, 
was satisfied with the tapasya of Nikarji Poldo. He was, you know, ill motivated, but somehow the system is is such uh, that uh, if somebody does such heavily tapasya, the reward has to be there, and Lord Brahma he has to follow that that universal order. So that's why he had to admit he he did his things to to get something, and uh, I'm obliged to give him. Otherwise, uh, if if I don't, uh, the universal order will be disturbed, and then uh, that will cause problems. The fourth chapter describes how Hrinkashipu, in hatred of Vishnu, defeated the devatas. It also describes the qualities of blood which arose from his prema bhakti. Hinakashipo should be Hinakashipuna and Tasya should be Tasmai. Okay. Shri Brahma Vacha. Tateme Dulaba Pumsam Yam Brinishe Varam Mama Tatapi Pitaram Yanga Varan Yadyapi Dulabam. Lord Brahma said, O oh, these benedictions for which you have asked are difficult to obtain for most men. Nonetheless, O so my son, I shall grant you that I shall grant you them, although they are generally not available. Material benedictions are not always exactly worthy of being called benedictions. If one possesses more and more, a benediction itself may become a curse. For just as achieving material opulence in this material world requires great strength and endeavor, maintaining it also requires a great endeavor. Lord Brahma informed Hinakashipu that although he was ready to offer him whatever he had asked, the result of the benedictions will be very difficult for Hrinikashipu to maintain. Nonetheless, since Brahma had promised he wanted to grant all this, all the benedictions asked, the word Durlabham indicates that one should not take benedictions, one cannot enjoy peacefully. So see, if somebody achieves something great, uh, that doesn't mean that uh, it's end of his worries, uh, because then you need to, to worry about how to maintain uh, your great wealth. You know, now in the world there are, I don't know how many, but uh, you know, maybe 100 billionaires, those who have more than $1 billion, and some of them, you know, have 100 or two, $300 billion, uh, I cannot even, you know, say how much it is, you know, I think one billion is a thousand million dollars. And then, uh, you know, Elon Musk or person like him, he has, you know, hundred or two hundred such billions. While, you know, <laughs> normal people, you know, in general, they don't have even one million dollars. One one zero point zero zero one percent of, of that wealth that he has, and uh, is he more happy than the rest of us? I doubt so. He he must be in anxiety that you know his wealth is not decreased because just small market move can you know erase a few billions in a in in a second. Uh, so what is he doing with this wealth? Is he using it for, for proper purposes? Not really. There is another so-called philanthropist, you know, Bill Gates, who's also billionaires with hundreds of billions, and he made some so-called uh, Bill Melinda Gates uh, Welfare Foundation. Although it's it's just welfare in uh, in the name and it's all business uh, and it's all meant to increase his wealth. 
and why he wants to increase it more. Only he knows or nobody knows. It, it's just immeasurable greed to have more and more, to control more and more. Uh, he's buying land in, uh, in the U.S. He's not the, the greatest you know, landowner in, in the U.S. And what is he doing there? He's cutting trees in order to prevent to prevent uh, climate change and killing cows in order to prevent global warming. But these are just actions of, of demoniac persons who somehow became immensely rich, like Henry Kashyap, who became immensely powerful to some to Topasia. Tato Jagama Bhagavan Amoganu Graho Vibu Ujitu Sura Varina Stuyamana Rajeshvare. Then Lord Brahma, for words infallible benedictions, departed and worshipped by the best the demons in Akashipu and being praised by great sages and saintly persons. So I guess all these sages and uh, devatas, they, they were also hovering in the sky when Lord Brahma was there. And uh, they praised Lord Brahma when he left. Like Gandharva, Siddhas, Charanas. They have Vimanas and they, they just fly wherever they want. So they accompany Lord Brahma and then they they sing his glories. Ivam labda varo daityo vibrat dima mayam vapu bhagavat yakro dvesham radhur padam anusmarani. The dima hinekashipu, having thus being blessed by Lord Brahma and having acquired a lustrous golden body continued to remember the death of his brother and therefore be envious of Lord Vishnu. A demonic person, in spite of acquiring all the opulence possible to obtain in this universe, continues to be envious of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Yeah, actually, Hinakashipu was millions of times more wealthy than any of the present day billionaires who are, you know, sort of a small ends for him. And although for us, they are, you know, their wealth is unimaginable. But for Hinakashipu's wealth, they're, they're, they're nothing. They're small, small, small. The Vijitya Disha Sarva, Lokam Shetrin Maha Suraha, Deva Sura Manu Manush Yendra, Gandharva Garudur Ragan, Sida Charana Vidya Dran, Vishim Pitri Patin Manun, Yaksha Rakshasa Kishat Cheshan, Preta Bhuta Patin Abhi, Sarva Sattva Patin Jitva Vasham Aniya. Vishwajit Jahara Loka Palanam Tanani Sahatejisa. Nikashiva became the conqueror of the entire universe. Indeed, the great demon conquered all the planets in the three worlds, upper, middle, and lower, including the planets of the human beings, the Gandharvas, the Garudas, the, the Garudas. Yeah, I don't know what is this. The Gandharas, the Garudas. You know about Garuda. Let me see the Sanskrit here. Did it say Garudas? Gandharva, Garudora. Gandharva, Garudas. Yeah, I didn't hear exactly what uh, this Garudas living entities, maybe like in something like Kim Purushas, 
maybe another word for and this is like Kim Purushas. Okay, the Siddhas, Charanas, Vidyadaras, the great saints, Yamaraj, the Manus, the Yakshas, the Rakshasas, the Bishachas, and their masters, and the masters, the Gos and Bhutas. He defeated the rulers of all other planets where there are living entities and brought them under the, his control. Conquering the boats of all, he sized their power and influence. Oh, here, Robert says, the word Garuda in this verse indicates there are planets of great birds like Garuda. Similarly, the word Uraga indicates that there are planets of enormous serpents. Such a description of the various planets of the universe may challenge modern scientists who think that all planets but this Earth are vacant. These scientists claim to have launched excursions to the moon where they have found no living entities but only big craters full of dust and stone. Although in fact the moon is so brilliant that it acts like the sun in illuminating the entire universe. Of course, it is not possible to convince modern scientists of the Vedic information about the universe. Nonetheless, we are not very much impressed by the words of scientists who say that all other planets are vacant and that only the Earth is full of living entities. Yeah, the moon is, it's illuminating, actually. It's, it's uh, you know, when it's full moon night, you see it in the sky, it dispels the darkness and you can, you know, go without uh, torchlight in the dark. <laughs> Moonlight is there. And then during the recent uh, eclipse of the sun, it was just maybe a month ago, uh, somebody, you know, made a point. Uh, according to modern science and astronomy, it's a moon who is causing the eclipse of the sun when it comes in between the sun and the earth. So, but how come that we don't see the moon before on the sky before it eclipses the sun and how come we don't see him after the eclipse is finished? Because generally during the day when the moon is, you know, full, uh, you, you can see it till certain hours. You can still see even during the day the moon in the sky but during these eclipses you never see you never see the moon before or after uh, eclipse of the sun you only see the dark dark figure covering the sun and devouring the sun and uh, according to Vedic cosmology the answer is simple it's not the moon who is covering the sun it's Rahu it's a dark planet that is generally invisible and becomes visible only during this time of eclipse. Uh, it's covering the sun and it's covering the moon also. So the Rahu is the cause of the eclipses. Not that moon and sun are the cause of eclipses. It's it's a misconception of the modern science. But yeah, they will stick to it because somehow or other they figure out the system that uh, to which they can predict these eclipses, so they say we are right, but actually these are just mathematical calculations. Yeah. yeah there is. Oh, okay. So the next one, Garuda means birds, which were of Garuda species. Okay, so the Garuda, he has his, you know, brothers and sisters. Uh, who are similar to him, huge humanoid birds. And they have their own planet, their own loka where they live. 
And uh, I guess Garuda is best of them because he's a carrier of Lord Vishnu. Yes, if Shad, I remember watching some some sort of movies or cartoons where the huge, huge uh, human-like birds uh, were, were there. You know, they they look like a humans, but they had a wings, and they were flying here and there. And there was another another one called Planet of the Monke Monkeys, uh, which actually referred to Kim Purush as uh, the humanoid apes, uh, uh, to which Hanuman belongs, Kim Purusha. So they're not just normal monkeys, uh, like this earth monkeys. Or, and similarly, Garuda, and the Garuda species are not just normal birds like uh, birds we know. They have features of, of humans and features of birds in the same body. Okay, next one. Devo dhyana shriya jushtam abhyaste smatri pishtapam mahendra bhavanam sakshan nirmitam vishva karmana tre lokya lakshmi yathanam Adyu Vasa Kilar Dimat. The Kashipu, who possessed all opulence, began residing in heaven with its famous Nandana Garden, which is enjoyed by the demigods. In fact, he resided in the most opulent palace of Indra, the king of heaven. The palace had been directly constructed by the demigod architect Vishwakarma and was beautifully made of all the goddesses, goddess of fortune and of the entire universe resided there. Oh, it was as beautifully made as if the goddess of fortune resided there. Although she didn't reside there, but it was made so opulently. So here it's clear that, uh, you know, Kinekaship will live there. So I guess the Lord Nishinada, then he appeared on uh, heavenly planets and killed, killed him there. Uh, after living in the palace of Indra, why would, you know, Kinekaship come to this earth and live in some insignificant uh, dwelling? Or even go, why would he even go to Bilvasvarga? If uh, Indra's palace is better, we always want to live in better and better houses. So that's why uh, it's it's a natural tendency to have more and more opulent residence. So from this description, it appears that all the heavenly planets of the upper planetary system are thousands upon thousands of times more opulent than the lower planetary system in which we live. Vishwakarma, the famous heavenly architect, is known as the constructor of many wonderful buildings in the upper planets, where there are not only beautiful buildings, but also many opulent gardens and parks, which are described as Nandan, Nandana Devo Dhyana, gardens quite fit to be enjoyed by the demigods. These descriptions of the upper planetary resistance and its opulence is to be understood from authoritative scriptures by the Vedic literatures. Telescopes and the other imperfect instruments of scientists are inadequate for evaluating the upper planetary resistance. All of such instruments are needed because the vision of the so-called scientists is imperfect. The instruments themselves are also imperfect. Therefore, the other planets cannot be appraised by imperfect men using imperfect man-made instruments. The direct information received from the Vedic literature, however, is perfect. We therefore cannot accept the statement that there are no opulent residences on planets other than this Earth. 
So Prabhupada is very emphatical uh, that <laughs> we cannot trust modern scientists with their with their conceptions and speculations. And they still say we don't know if there is a life uh, outside of Earth. Probably not. But then uh, every few days, you know, in some newspapers, you'll find an article about UFOs or UFO was seen here and there. And the NASA, they will, you know, examine it and see is it uh, genuine or not. But I think even the American government last year releasing classified documents about these UFOs because there were thousands of encounters of military airplanes and uh, they could just not be discounted. It, it, it became so frequent that it cannot be discounted and they had to declassify basically and publish. Although I don't know in the first place why they were hiding it at all. But probably, you know, to preserve their their science theories that we are the only living entities in this universe and uh, then they can, you know, uh, fund their space program and ask for billions from the public. But if, if you know, if there are living entities out there and uh, and they cannot really uh, say and uh, and verify that. Uh, so why they're taking all these billions of dollars for space research program without being able to to verify anything? So that's why they they're trying to hide and say that you know we are the only living entities in the in the universe. So it's all all boils down to, to money, scamming public for money in the name of science and space research. Yatra Vidruma Sopana Maha Marakata Bhuvaha Yatra Svatika Udhyani Vaidurya Stamba Pankathaya Yatra Chitra Vithanani Padmargasananicha Payafena Nibashaya Muktadama Parichada Pujad Pujadbir Nupurayar Divya Shabda Yantya Itastatha Ratna Sthal Shukashyanti Sudati Sundaram Mukam Tasmi Mahendra Bhavane Mahabhalo Mahamana Nirjita Loka Ekarat Reme Bivan Dyan Gri Yuga Suradibi Pratapithair Urjita Chandashasana The steps of King Indra's residence were made of coral. So coral is very, very, you know, expensive stone, a red coral, you know, just small, small few carats stone is, uh, you know, thousands of dollars. But uh, in this palace, has uh, you know stairs made of these precious gems. The floor was bedded with invaluable emeralds. The walls were of crystal, and the columns of Vaiduria stone. The wonderful canopies were beautifully decorated. The seats were bedded with rubies, and the silk bedding, as white as a foam, was decorated with the pearls. The ladies of the palace were blessed with beautiful teeth and the most wonderfully beautiful faces. Walk here and there in the palace, their ankle bells tinkling melodiously and saw their own beautiful reflections in the gems. The demigods, however, being very much oppressed, had to go down and offer obeisances to the feet of Anikashipu who chastised the demigods very severely and for no reason. And thus, Hinekashipu, who lived in the palace and severely ruled everyone. So this was very 
unusual situations. Uh, uh, the demigods, they, uh, you know, they are ruling the, the universe. Uh, they are in charge for different universal affairs. But now these same demigods, they had to go down to a demon and they were shaking in fear, out, out, out of fear of Nikashiki. Who, who is a demon, who is not even David, who was not born in, in Swarga. They were all born in a higher planetary system. But Nikashiki was not from there. He was a foreigner, stranger, who came there, occupied everything and imposed his rule. So Hinkashi was so powerful in the heavenly planets that all the demigods except Lord Rama, Lord Shiva, and Lord Vishnu were forced to engage in his service. Indeed, they were afraid of being severely punished if they disobeyed him. So he could, could kill them anytime. So they were rightly afraid, afraid from him. So Vishnu Jagrati has compared Hinkashi to Maharaj Vena was also atheistic and scornful of the ritualistic ceremonies mentioned in the Vedas. Yet Maharaj Vena was afraid of some of the great sages, such as Brigo, whereas Hinakashipu ruled in such a way that everyone feared him, but Lord Vishnu, Lord Brahma, and Lord Shiva. The only three persons in the universe, they were not afraid. Everybody else was, including the great sages. And the reasons of Tapaloka and Maharloka. So Hinakashipu was so alert against being burned to ashes by the anger of great sages like Brigu, that by dint of austerity he surpassed their power and placed even them under his subordination. It appears that even in the hard planetary systems, to which people are promoted by pious activities, disturbances are created by Asuras like in Akashic. No one in the three worlds can live in peace and prosperity without disturbance. So even if you go to heaven, disturbance will be there. Maybe not all the time, but occasionally it will be there. And that's why we better get used on disturbance here and uh, figure out how to get out of, of the material world instead of going to Swarga. Tat Anga Matham Madunoru Gandina Vivrita Tamrakshama Shesha Dishnyapha Upasato Payana Panibir Vina Trivista Po Yoga Balanu Jasampadam My dear king, in the Kashyap was always drunk with strong smelling wines and liquors, and therefore his coppery eyes were always rolling. Nonetheless, because he had powerfully executed great austerities in mystic yoga, although he was abominable, all but the three principal demigods, Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, and Lord Vishnu, personally worshipped him, placed him by bringing him various presentations with their own hands. So in Kashifu, he was always drunk, but uh, he was not, uh, how to say, he was not incapacitated by, by drinking. It's not that he was, you know, uh, about to fall on the ground and uh, that his you know, mind was blurred and that he didn't know what to do. <laughs> he was drinking and uh, still he was very much fit and uh, he could do anything he wanted. And I, I heard of some people, you know, who get, somehow he, they got uh, trained by drinking that uh, they don't get drunk, you know. 
because they so much become used on drinking of of too much uh, over overuse or not only drinking but also using the drugs uh, from uh, using it for a long time they became sort of immune and uh, the drink or the drug doesn't really affect them anymore so they still stay sober although you know they they drink or or take take a drug so similar in Hinnakashi who although he was drinking enjoying uh, he was not uh, really uh, affected by it otherwise you know if he was drunk uh, and uh, he would just fall on the ground in that drunk state then we could have just jumped on him and kill him <laughs> but no he was still very much uh, capable and aware and uh, and conscious even while drinking a lot in the skanda purana there's a, this description upanam dadu sarve vina deva hiranyaksha Nakashiba was so powerful that everyone but the two principal demigods, namely Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, and Lord Vishnu, engage in his service. Madhvacharya says, Aditya Vasava Rudras, Trivida Hisura Yattaha. The three kinds of demigods, the Adityas, the Vasus, and the Rudras, beneath whom are the other demigods like the Maruts and Sadhyas. Marutas Chaiva, Vishvecha, Sadhyas Chaiva, Chittad Gataha. Therefore, all the demigods are called Tripishtapa, and the same word three applies to Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, and Lord Vishnu. Yeah, three means three, like in English, same. Tim. Vishnu Chakrati Thakur. He was worshipped by the devatas who brought gifts, but by not Brahma, Vishnu, or Shiva. Though he was fixed in Adharma like King Vena, in his kingdom, the lands gave products without cultivation. However, that was out of fear, because they would be immediately killed if they did not do so. I guess the Devatas who were in charge for crops and plants, uh, they they gave products. Vena did not have such power. Thus he was turned to ashes by Brigu and other sages. The Kashipu, however, took the prowess of Brigu and others in the beginning. Yeah, because he executed the most severe to pass and then the these sages, his power was greater. His stages, his shakti was greater, so they could not do anything to him. And they were all had to be afraid of him. Okay, Jagur Mahen Drasanam Ojasastitam Vishwavasus Tumburu Rasman Addaya Kandarvasi Darishayo Stuvan Muhu Vidyadharsh Chapasara Asash Chapandava Umara Judishtir, the son of Pandu, by dint of his personal power in a Kashipu, being situated on the throne of King Indra, controlled the inhabitants of all other planets. The two Gandharas, Vishwasas and Tumburu, I myself and the gatherers, upsetters and sages all over prayers to him again and again just to glorify him. The Asuras sometimes become so powerful that they can engage even Narada Muni and similar devotees in their service. This does not mean that Narada was subordinate to Hanukashipu. Sometimes, however, it is, it so happens in this material world that great personalities, even great devotees, can also be controlled by the asuras. So if you remember also the, uh, you know, King Ugrasena and all the others, 
el vaso de vender aquí de Bob con todo el cansa y dejé tu fiel cansa and then also we have example of Rupa and Sanatu Goswami serving in the government of Nawab Hussein Shah you know, they were great much greater than Nawab still and uh, they they serving his government uh, they were prime ministers and home minister one may ask why they did that and uh, I heard some explanation that actually they were blackmailed to do this and they were forced to do this. If they didn't do it, the, the Shah, he would uh, make havoc in, a, in a, their village and, and, and kill their relatives. So they just were forced to serve his government. So similarly, yeah, sometimes devotees may be forced to be part of uh, some demoniac uh, or not so godly enterprise. Uh, they're in such, just such a situation that you know they're working in some company. The company might not be the, the most pious and dharmic. But as far as possible, we should uh, you know avoid adharmic professions so it's devotee cannot work as a butcher on in, in butcher com, uh, butcher's company or such a sinful enterprise it's 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 very unfavorable so at all means we should uh, avoid it and uh, if we need to earn money just try to earn it in some more pious and dharmic way Okay, I think we'll just have one more. Oh, I'm quite exhausted. Saeva vana shamidi tetubir guri dakshinai iya mano havir bhagan agrahit svena tejisa. Being worshipped by sacrifices offered with great gifts by those who strictly follow the principles of Dvarna and Ashrama in Akashipu, instead of offering shares and oblations to the demigods, accepted them himself. So I guess he was taking, eating everything that was offered uh, in the sacrifices. He was the main recipient of the the Yagi shares. All right, one more. Akrista Pachyatasya Sip Sapta Dipavati Mahi Tata Kama Dugagavo Nanashira Padam Nabaha. As if in fear of Hinikashi for the planet Earth which consists of seven islands, deliver four grains without being allowed. This is something I heard of. Thus, if it, is, if it, resembled, thus it resembled cows like the Surabi in the spiritual world or the Kama Duga of heaven. Earth yielded significant food grains. The cows supplied abundant milk the outer space was beautifully decorated with wonderful phenomena. So Earth, if if she wins, she, if she wishes, she's a demigoddess. If she, boo boo, mother Bumi, if she wants, uh, she can you know give uh, whatever is necessary for for life, like food grains and vegetables, even if it's not cultivated. But uh, if it's cultivated and uh, she is not pleased, she can, you know, withdraw the the crops, and, and there will be famine. And this happens in a case of of sinful population, which is presently in this age of Kali. 
Okay, I think I will stop here if you have any final comments or questions, please. If not, we will continue next Wednesday, which will be in last class before the break uh, in the month of June. Okay, since nothing is there, thank you. All thank you much. Very much. Appreciate it. I know it's very hot and uh, you must be quite tired. And thank you for spending so much thank time. You. For thank appreciate you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank 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 you.